Okay, so we're going to go over a, um, a polishing procedure, a watch polishing, polishing procedure that I've come up with um, that I like to use on these old uh, vintage digital watches. So you can see it's, you know, pretty well worn. And this is a Seiko 0634, the world's first uh, digital stopwatch. And it's just awesome. So I want to take it apart and clean uh, clean the case a bit. The case is already clean. I want to polish it up. I want to polish the glass and the stainless and just give it a nice once over, make it look a little new, newer. All right, so with that said, we'll move on with it. Cool things about this watch is that it's really well built. I mean, look at just everything's marked. Um, oops. And uh, it has uh, stainless steel, or sorry, has a uh, solid end links, as you can see. I mean, this thing is just a tank. I mean, these were priced more than Speedmasters back in the day. Um, very cool piece. Anyway, we'll keep it's important going. to note that when taking this thing apart, there are these little springs uh, right here and here, and on the other side as well, right there and there, and those simply snap into the case. So you merely have to remove the wrist bracelet and then pop them out with a screwdriver. So it's pretty easy to get in here. Again, this thing is just so well built. Uh, I'm only going to take the case uh, this far, and uh, I'm going to leave the movement alone as much as I possibly can, because, yeah, this just pops out like that. And now we've got this piece separated, and I've got the glass separated. That is separated. We don't want to mess that up. And I will um, remove these pins here and get the pushers out. I guess I'll have to take this apart because I want that pusher. So I'll just take that, this, and this, oops, careful, careful. And this movement's in perfect shape. So yeah, I do have a cheap battery in there. Right. I don't care. I just replace them all the time. So here's the movement. And we are going to uh, leave that over there for now. And then uh, and I think what we want to do is take out the uh, this guy, polish that, leave this over here. And we want to polish the pushers and the front of the case first. Then we'll get the bracelet later. So we'll put that aside and let's remove these parts. Okay, so in this step, we're wet sanding the glass. And all you do is do this for like an hour. And you see all this gross white stuff? This is actually the glass coming off. And this is uh, 600 grit. So anyway, this is the worst part of polishing the watch up, right here. All right, so uh, I've completed uh, sanding this glass down. As you can see, it's pretty good. You get it real hazy and you take a whole bunch off to get the deep gouges out as best you can. I mean, there's still a couple there, but they're um, not too bad at this point. Uh, and, and this all this white stuff is actually the glass particulate and I'll do one or maybe sometimes two sand pieces of sandpaper for the piece. So, um, yeah, this is the worst part of the job. This takes about an hour to do. And now that that's over with, then we'll uh, move on to polishing this uh, this glass. Okay, so what I did was I taped it down to an old piece of scrap aluminum here to get the heat off of this thing. This is how I do the watches that are cased as well. And I put it in this half cut out paper bag to catch the the cerium oxide, which is over here. Now we're going to hit it with that and uh, 
hit it over and over and over again until it's polished, following TB's uh, uh, procedure, which works quite well. Okay, so things did not go so well at first. I cracked this one, put too much heat on it. So I found another um, glass screen. So I've sanded this one down as before, and I'm going at it with the... Um, Started with the 0.5 micron followed by the uh, cerium oxide stuff. So, taking it a little easier on this one. Uh, I've done these before, it's my first one um, that I've cracked. But, you know, shit happens when you make this stuff, so. <laughs> first one I've ever had that crack, so we're going to keep going. We'll fix this one up. It's my plan B. I've got a donor movement here, so we're going to keep cranking on Okay, after lots of, uh, you know, dipping this thing in here, driving it straight down like that and polishing the hell out of this thing, literally 35 minutes of that, uh, you can see that it's pretty decent. You should be able to see a nice straight reflection without any wobblies or bad um, distortions in the glass. So I'll call this done. And uh, now it's time to move on to the next phase. And that fan is pretty dirty there. Sweet. So this is looking really good. Okay, for better or worse, I did a couple more rounds of this 0.5 micron. It's got a diamond uh, paste um, against the glass, and uh, I think it's looking really good. Um, pretty happy with it. Uh, some people use this mixed with the cer the cerium, whatever that oxide stuff is. Um, I found that sometimes this this tends to take off a little faster, but sometimes that uh, is what is needed to really get it over the edge. Yeah, next we are going to uh, polish the case. I'll do the shiny pieces first, and then I'll do the brush stuff later for detail. Um, I like to do it that way because I can usually uh, get the brush stuff by hand and allow that to make a use the brushed part to make a um, or rather the brush portion to make really sharp transitions between the types of finishes. So we'll hit we'll shine everything up with this right now, and then uh, just the top part, and then we'll hit it with Cape Cod wipes to make to give it a mirror finish. Then we'll do the buttons. Just a few passes with the rotary tool, you can see the difference between this side and uh, this side. So it really gets the shine out. It looks really awesome. Alright, so uh, now I've got all the uh, shiny parts shined up with the uh, with the jeweler's rouge. And, and here's the stuff that I'm using, by the way. And uh, the um, next step is... I'm going to take these Cape Cod wipes and uh, give it a mirror finish on all the sides. Uh, they're shiny and then we'll move on to the brushed. Okay, so if you hit it with the Cape Cod wipe, uh, you get this um, mirror finish. So it goes from shiny to mirror finish, which is what I like to see. Um, oops, those are my fingerprints on there. Yeah, it's actually really good. Uh, pretty decent. I think um, I like the mirror finish. It's more my fingerprints um, because uh, you know if you look at a new Omega or something, it has all the polished areas have a mirror finish on that. I think it looks good. So I hit it with these um, things. So you do the jeweler's rouge followed by these guys and that's what I do to all the polished uh, surfaces and the brushed ones we'll do next. Okay the next step is to do this um, the brush at least the first pass of the brush so I've already done it here but what I do is I take a uh, the working piece and I put it on the sandpaper and just drag it over and over and over again to get the scratches out. And this is the coarse finish. This is um, <coughs> sandpaper is number 400 uh, and 
for the curves. Uh, and of course you're not going to get everything out, but I get most of it. For the curves, I use this um, this 400 foam block, and I just push it in there and back and forth and back and forth and make sure the grain lines up. This one needs a little more work right here. Um, similarly in these, I, I use the foam block, and, or you can just you know make a square of this and rub rub them on either one of these. You don't need a foam block. You can always cut this up in little squares and affect it the same way. And then I rub these down. I get most of the scratches out. Um, this is a good once over. Same with this one. This one looks pretty decent. And then I do the buckle. And the buckle is mostly, most of the scratches are out there too. And that's kind of where I like to leave it. Just get most of them out. Uh, and as you will notice, the um, the uh, shiny parts are still intact because when you do this sanding motion, uh, it doesn't, on a flat surface, if you have it on a flat surface and you do this, it will not hit the shiny part. So what ends up happening is you have a nice contrast of brushed and um, shiny, which is really the original um, intent of the finish. So the next step is going to be to take um, this thing and hit it. This is the final step of the um, of the uh, brushed. This is this is basically a fine, really fine grit, and that'll make it bring it down one more level, make it look really nice, and it'll remove any and all imperfections from the 400. Okay, now you can see how things look after the Scotch Bright. Um, this thing is looking really sweet. I mean, you know, some of the deep scratches are still there, but it's pretty looking decent. And then this, the buckle, and uh, the bracelet. I mean, these things now, it, it kind of gives it a finer brush finish. And I had to mask off with the kept on tape um, all the shiny parts. So next we'll, uh, we'll do the sides here. And uh, I'll have to cap on tape um, all the shiny bits because you don't want to mess those up uh, when you're doing this. So I just did the top. The sides will be tougher. All right, so this is just kind of an example of uh, masking off with cap on tape. And I have two types. I've got this and I've got the one millimeter. So between the two of them, I can mask off just about anything. It's a very tedious process, but well worth it. And that is how you get the sharp looking finish. So now I'm going to take this to the Scotch Bright. Okay, so here it is. Um, so after the uh, Scotch Bright and everything else, um, yeah, this looks pretty sweet. I mean, there's always a couple spots you can touch up, you know, where the sandpaper may have slipped or whatever, but yeah, we can do those later. But this is looking like a pretty nice piece here. So it's time to move on to um, the bracelet. There's a little more work that has to be done on the bracelet. This side here has to be polished up um, to be shiny. Okay, now that this is all taped off, we're going to hit this with the Jewelers Rouge and polish up the top, bottom, and the corners there. Uh, and then again with the Cape Cod wipes. Okay, and check this out. So this is the, look at that, nice and shiny. Get the Cape Cod and uh, the Rouge, uh, and you can see that um, the buckle turned out pretty nice. Those are just my fingerprints, but yeah, you know, it's one little spot where a digital watch can have a little bit of uh, style to it. Okay, next we're going to polish the buttons, and so what I like to do is uh, use a pin vise and chuck the button in the pin vise and hit it. Uh, with the Dremel. Obviously I can't do this with one hand, but you can get this button really shiny and do that to all of them and then follow it up with the Cape Cod wipes uh, to give it a mirror finish. And I think with that um, I might be done. I'll take another, I'll inspect the case one more time, see if there's anywhere that need that may need a touch up while I have all this equipment out. But I might touch it up a little bit. Um, 
but that's uh, that's the next step. All right, so here are the buttons. Um, there it is, really shiny, uh, much better than before. So uh, next, what we'll do is we'll take a look at the case and see if there's anywhere we want to touch up. Okay, so here we are with the finished product. Um, I mean, the finish looks awesome. Buckle's good. It's shiny where it needs to be. Uh, very happy with the outcome of the uh, once over fish. Not a new watch, obviously, but um, pretty good. Right, we'll take it off the wrist for a closer look. Um, yeah. Just wipe that off. Real shiny on the sides and um, you know brush finish looks good again most of the scratches removed and uh, yeah not a lot of um, and here's the buckle the buckle looks sweet yeah that looks good that's what it should look like it's just a once over uh, polishing. Not hugely invasive, not hugely thorough, but keeping the original glass and everything. Uh, and it makes the watch look very uh, decent for, for um, wearing around town at work. Uh, you know, these old watches are special. If you, can, if you wear something like this, it means you fixed it up yourself because they're not worth sending out for repair, at least not yet. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the uh, good once-over finishing, refinishing of an old um, digital wristwatch.